Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use CSS in order to style the container for an image so that it fits the image nicely, regardless of the size that is. So, so I've got a page set up, and there's nothing fancy on it for sure. So let's go ahead and put an image on this page. Actually, I'm going to put it inside of a figure. Uh, the person who asked this question, I think that's what they were really dealing with, is having an image, an inline element, inside of some container, a block element. And figure is as good enough example as anything. Figure, div, article, aside, any of those would work. Okay, so I've got a set of figure tags, and then I'm going to put an image in. Source equals images slash, and I've got a picture already. Two women in a field. And I'll do an empty alt. Okay, so let's see how this, of course, looks on the page. There we go. So we've got our image displaying nicely. Great. Now, in order to visualize the problem we're going to have, I'm going to go up to my page's internal styling up in the head section, and I'll pick on the figure first. Border 8 pixels solid, and um, yeah, let's just do sandy brown. So we're going to put a border on the figure, and you can clearly see, because that figure is a block element, it wants to take up the full width that it can, whereas our image is pretty much over there to the left. So we have a couple of remedies for this. Depending on what you're doing, one quick fix could be, well, don't put a border on the picture frame. Don't put a border on the container. Put a border instead on the image itself. So if I put my border on the image, you're going to see I get that border, and it's sized, and it fits perfectly with the image. And I don't have to worry about the size of the image with height proportions or anything like that. So that's one fix right there, is to put the border on the image instead of the container. However, maybe you've got reasons. So I'm going to put that border back on the figure. And so that we can visualize some stuff, I'm going to put a border on the image too. Yeah, red is fine. So now we're going to be able to clearly see what's inside of what. Now we have a couple of potential fixes here. So if I jump over to my markup and I go to my figure, here's one quick potential fix. Display inline block. Now by putting display inline block, that's going to size that figure down so it'll shrink up and it'll accommodate its child element, in this case the image. And now, okay, well that looks pretty good. You can just see though, I still have this little bit of gap. And this is created sometimes between my image and the border of my container. There's one fix I'll show you here that I don't like, so I'm going to delete it pretty quickly. But I could go to my image and I could put a margin bottom uh, negative like three pixels, could be two, three, or four. And that'll take away that gap. So that kind of solves that issue if that's the way you want to go. However, that's kind of a it's kind of a hacky little fix, right? So let's pretend we don't have that. And of course, that creates the problem again of that gap between the image and the container border. Well, we have a few other options too. Um, instead of using display inline block, let's see what happens if I did a float left on that figure. Looks pretty much the same. Now, just so you know that it's working. I'll do a float right on the figure, and that'll push it over to the right, and we can see we still have that gap on there. Well, I don't want that at all. So apparently float's not a good solution, but there's something else we can do. We can go back to display and check this out. I'm going to do display flex, making this a flex box parent. Let's see what that does. Well, that takes care of the gap between the image and the container border, but notice it's stretched all the way out again, and my container is taking the full width. So display flex maybe isn't so good. However, there is a display inline flex, which should give us the best of both worlds. It'll give us the combination of an inline block, but also a flex box parent. So display inline flex on the container for the image. And now you can see that the container border, that sandy brown color, perfectly hugs the image with its red border. And of course, if we don't want to see that red border, we can delete it or zero it out. And now we have a nice, neat container border around the image 
regardless of the image size. If my image was a little bit smaller, no, I'm not writing this properly, width equals 300. I don't usually do that method. But now my image is smaller, yet that container frame fits it nicely. So there we go. So that's the trick I'm going to recommend for you is insert your image normally as you would, but for its container, go ahead and make that display inline flex so that you can really get that border, that container border to hug it. Thanks for hanging out with me.